back. And in this course, we're going to present the ANSYS Maxwell Eddy Current Solver with ice pack for performing an electrothermal management analysis, an ETM for short. So ANSYS Maxwell is used to simulate your model design for an electronic electromagnetic analysis. And then that electronic results are going to be coupled into the fluid based solver ice pack for a thermal analysis. And in this video, we're going to analyze that electromagnetic break using the eddy current solver in ANSYS Maxwell, that same model geometry that we had used to discuss the magnetostatic solver in ANSYS Maxwell. So what's the difference between the magnetostatic solver and the eddy current solver inside of Maxwell? Well, the magnetostatic solver, that assumes a steady state DC current and permanent magnets as their excitations. And from an application perspective, the steady DC current in the windings create a steady field and a static flux linkage for each of those windings. Whereas the any current solver is an AC magnetic solver, and that's a quasi-static solver. Now that assumes only the steady AC current as an excitation. And from the application perspective, the AC current in the windings create the steady state AC magnetic fields, and these AC fields induce other currents in the solid conductors, as well as in neighboring uh, coils. So this frequency domain solution, it assumes that the frequency is the same throughout the domain. So let's go ahead and open that same EMB project file that we created in the last course in the magnetostatic simulation on an EMB, electromagnetic break. And in this project file, we have a design that's named EMB underscore 3D1. And then we copied from the original design file to create a 2D design. Right mouse click on that design, select solution type, and change the solution type to eddy current. Select the design name, and you'll see the design variables under the property windows. Go ahead, change that amp value to five amps. The eddy current solver considers the current value as the peak, the peak value of the AC current at the frequency that we defined under the analysis setup. Right mouse click, on excitations, select set eddy effect. And once the pop-up window appears, select eddy effect only for the core and for the brake plate. And we can delete the parametric setup as we're not going to do any parametric simulations in this video. Though we can run the parametric setup with any of the design variables. Go ahead, right mouse click on the analysis setup and select the solution setup. Under that general tab, change the percentage error to two. Under the solver tab, change the adaptive frequency to 300 Hertz. Press okay. Go to the simulation tab, select validate to make sure that there are no errors in the simulation setup. Go to analysis, right mouse click on setup one, select analyze, and after the simulation is complete, we can now calculate the local ohmic loss in the various parts of the design. We are going to use the field calculator. Right mouse click on the field overlays and select calculator. From the fields calculator panel, select under input, quantity, ohmic loss, and again under input, geometry, volume, break underscore plate, under scalar, select integrate, click add, and enter the name as loss underscore plate. And similarly, let's create the ohmic loss, the named expressions for the core and the coil, and name them as loss underscore core and loss underscore coil. Go ahead, select loss underscore core from the named expression list, select copy to stack, select eval under the output option. And this ohmic loss in the core volume 
is displayed in watts. And these losses are the induced AC losses in the core. And similarly, you can also check these ohmic loss for the brake plate and the coil. Select the brake plate, right mouse click on the fields overlays, fields, J, vector underscore J, and now you can see the current distribution on the bottom of the brake plate. Select the brake plate, right click on the field overlays, fields, other, ohmic loss. Go ahead, change the orientation on the draw tab to bottom Z, just to better visualize the plot. And this shows the ohmic loss distribution on that bottom of the brake plate. And it is in agreement with the current density vector plot. Let's look at the force acting on the brake plate. Go to results, right mouse click, create any current report, data table. In the pop-up window under category, select force and under quantity, select AC force, magnitude. And you can see that the force is 2.8 kilonewtons, which is higher and may be possible, but at the expense of other practical limitations. And one of the limitations is the magnetic saturation of the material. Let's look at mag underscore B field plot. And you can see that the maximum flux density values are around 2.4 Tesla, which indicates that the flux density levels is beyond the magnetic saturation limits of the core and the brake plate material. And this results in higher core losses. Another limitation to be checked before concluding any EM design is the thermal operation. So this completes the eddy current simulation in Maxwell on that EMV. Next, we're gonna show you how to perform that thermal co-simulation with ice pack. Thank you for watching this video. And for more videos on Maxwell or any of our ANSYS simulation tools, please go to courses.ansys.com today. Thank you.